so i think d2c brands if you look at it have come up on uh, two big kind of uh, uh, phenomenons okay uh, one is that uh, during the pandemic uh, d2c brands typically picked up around that time frame uh, they have been uh, designed products uh, by d2c players are really being designed for their customers that that they've seen so it's actually addressing a specific customer need in their community etc and then they have uh, grown from that okay i think the other uh, phenomenon that has happened is uh, that uh, you know the indian consumer overall has been more amenable to trying out lesser known brands or non branded uh, products and experiment so i think experimentation here is the key word uh the indian consumer has typically been more open to experimentation in the last 2 to 3 years so that has given a good boost to d2c brands to put their foot in the door and and offer these uh, things to the their products to the customers okay i think that coupled by coupled with the government initiatives that have enabled uh, manufacturing in india and pushing manufacturing in india as well as uh, you know social commerce platforms making it really simple to sell their products i think these three or four things have come together to give a big boost to d2c brands to really grow and thrive uh, really fast uh in terms of yeah in terms of competition i would say that d2c brands have typically been online first and uh, are now expanding into tier 2 tier 3 as well as offline presence that's where the competition is i would say is starting to grow uh, and to stay uh, competitive was your second question uh, how are we staying competitive well i think we have the advantage of being already well entrenched in the physical space uh, we are leveraging our digital channels to be able to deliver anywhere in the country uh, as fast as possible so i think that uh, Uh, now it's more about omni-channel fulfillment and leveraging our physical space to be able to deliver. I think that's where we have the advantage. So if I look at my, I'll just first talk about the general consumer that we are, uh, our customers rather. Okay. Uh, so we have Lifestyle, Max, Easy Buy, Home Center, and Spa. Okay. Uh, if I look at the customer overlap across these categories. Uh, for example a typical max customer would shop at the lower end of the price spectrum of a lifestyle format okay similarly an easy buy customer would shop at the lower end of the price spectrum of a max format so we're seeing overlaps of customers across our formats to that extent a home center uh, customer typically would shop across all of these three formats so we are seeing a good amount of overlap across our customers within our own uh, formats that is one clear area where we are looking to leverage and enhance the cross pollination of uh, our own customers between our uh, retail formats for that we have we are building or we have in place but we are enhancing our customer data platform to be able to have a single view of customer and be able to target these customers a lot better create much better campaigns uh introduce more like machine learning models that can uh you know after a campaign is complete be able to modify and be able to again retarget customers with some amount of learning of that campaign so these are initiatives which we are already carrying out or in place uh, on the supply chain front we are re-architect re-architecting our uh, tech landscape to make sure that we can uh, you know have common logistics for example a common platform for logistics uh, today we do have some commonality but maybe there is a little bit of uh, individual uh, execution but we are trying to have a common technological landscape so that we can uh, leverage our economies of scale and be able to then uh, deliver a lot faster to our customers so that's where we are introducing new stuff